match interview, but you know, he should realise that he will always get chances at this level. Red to the middle here, big one to start. One. Over screwed a bit. Which means he probably has to hit the red above the black. Straighter would have been, of course, better. Has he got a plant or has he got a red to the right middle? They're the only two options. Eight. The plant must be close. He's having a long look at it. No, not on at all, I'm afraid. And I don't think the other red's on either. Can't see how he can turn this into a plant either. I don't see that with the red and the cube all so close to each other how we can make this happen. It would be a good shot. No, just dropping into the bunch. Ryan Day, eight. The point I was making about Mark Selby a little earlier, in these lengthy matches, he does quite often have peaks and troughs. Of course, the peaks last longer than the troughs, so that's why he comes out on top more often than not. No, the one on the right. But right now he's going through a, a period where he's got no real rhythm. OK, he won frame four. After 39 minutes. But since those first two frames, he's not looked particularly good. I think there must be some doubt as to how many of these reds he's touching. <laughs> two of them, maybe. Oh, this one. Yeah. Just one of them, apparently. But he can play away. Obviously, he can't t touch the red that he's in contact with now, that would be a foul. After the glamour of the maximum, this is more snooker, hard labour.
Well, he didn't really even try and leave it safe. I think he felt he didn't have a, an escape of his own. But now he's given Selby a good chance here. Didn't hit this badly, but he had absolutely no cover. One. Given the red he missed earlier in the frame, he struck that one very well. Eight. Sixteen. I think playing on the pink gives him 17. an easier option for position. He's right at the bottom of the little bunch of four there that are close together. He's one that he'd like to play on. Twenty-three. He just made it. I think he is on it, but it's... A little bit too close for comfort. <coughs> Just get through to this. Twenty-four. I'm so pleased that red stopped. 31. That would have been horrible, wouldn't it? Because it was such a terrific split. A split that means Selby, from here, really 32. should make it 4 2. Yeah, many fine margins in this game. Another day the red just topples into the pocket. Then. Uh... I feel a little aggrieved. I've got to be thankful when days when it doesn't ha quite happen like that. And like you say, what a chance now to get the frame one. Forty-seven. A couple of reds with colours which should make the frame completely and utterly safe. Might have to use his reserve red if nothing else goes. that has been saving. And just any 55. colour with this, that'll be enough to get another frame. Fifty-six.
six to one. Pleasing visit this for Mark Selby. Six to Unable two. to visualise a safety, Day went for a risky red, and he's paid for it. Sixty-eight. Solby's third break. In excess of 70 in the match so far, but that's where it ends. No position on the that's penultimate that's red that's for the job had been well and truly done. Mark Selby back two in front, this time at 4-2. Welcome back, everyone. Two more frames to be played this afternoon. Ryan Day would seven. love to get back onto Ryan level Day terms. But the way the match has gone... The one four seven accepted, of course. You have to believe Selby's looking good for some form of first session advantage. And based on past experience, Mark Selby will want to build as big a lead as possible. In his very first match in the Tour Championship in 2019 in Clandidno, he was 6-2 up to Neil Robertson, lost 9-8 on the black. One. He knows the importance of continuing to grind. I think what Selby is very good at is, uh, OK, he went out of position there. He didn't just play any safety shot to the cushion. He always looks for the most difficult place for the cue ball to be. I know that sounds an obvious thing, but if you're disappointed that you've broken down, you can easily just say, well, OK, that's that visit over with. But he, it's almost like every shot becomes an event for Selby, and that's, in the end, keeps people like Ryan Day out for even longer. And he's always been a thoughtful player. Dear, dearie me, that uh, puts a shiver down your spine as a snooker player seeing a shot like that where you hit the bunch very thick, reds go everywhere, cue ball goes nowhere. You might end up sitting down for a while on the back of it. He knows it. He really went into the bunch heavily there. As that white was limping its way back up towards the blue, Day felt like a golfer who sees a, a ball flying out of bounds and can't do anything to stop it. One. Well, in between frames, Neil and I were ordering our dinner. Six. This is on a plate for Selby. No development work to do whatsoever. All of the reds have been spread far and wide by his rival.
Well, if you're giving some Seven. information out there, Phil, you might as well go with the whole hog. What, what have you ordered now? Uh, let's have it. You've, you've said it. Uh, cottage pie and rice pudding. Mm. Okay. I mean, the reds around the black spot here in great positions. Once he gets on his next red, I don't know which one he's going to play on here? Wow, didn't he hit that hard? It was just off straight. He absolutely thumped that one in just to get any cue ball reaction. Amazing how he's got out of position so quickly here, you know. I know he's on the yellow or the blue, but from there, you know, it's not how he meant it. Just a little bit of pressure building on this break. He came to the table with loads on, basically. Red's absolutely sport for choice. 17. Now he's mid-range. You should get this, but just sometimes in the back of your mind, you shouldn't be in this position, really. Eighteen. Just going in the side door at the minute, but uh, they all count. This time, I think he's got the situation in control. Forty two. I always think the longer matches suit Mark Selby, I guess four forty nine world titles would back that up. Just that he's played the percentages, he, his concentration stays solid. He's obviously a great player as well, on top of all of that. The kind of player over a long match at the Crucible. 50. Someone's going to have to shift him. It's very difficult to do so once he's got his sort of self into the event. Get the feeling he's coming into form at a good time. This is a big event. And he's got no 57. track record of doing well in the Tour Championship, but he's got as much chance as anyone, I think, at the moment, the way he's playing. 58. Yes, yeah, hugely motivated to do well here. If he does so, 
of course, he will get back to world number one. It would be his ninth spell at the apex of the world rankings. And as you say, in these lengthy matches, because he's got such a an unimpeachable all-round game, he's so hard to beat. And that's 66. why, as he knocks in frame ball there, he's going to be such a threat in Hull and down the road in Sheffield. Seventy-three. I said initially, the chance was on a plate. Early on, he made a meal of it, but now it's gravy. Seventy-four. Yeah, nice little nudge to release one, let him play on the other one. 8 1. Eight two. One very positive aspect about this season for Mark Selby. 89. He's already made more centuries on the Pro Tour than he did last season. 90. This would be his 36th. 97. Ninety-eight. Thank you. What a difficulties with position, uh, position early in the break, but otherwise he, what's he got right back in? He is really. Looked like missing at all, and I think this is more of a reflection of his current form than what we'd seen earlier in the match. Yeah, it's been a good break. Finding his feet, which makes me think that the next frame is... I mean, we always say the next frame is important, but for Ryan Day, it absolutely is. The key shot, when he was running out of position... After he'd rolled in the yellow to middle, had to knock in that pressure red from mid-distance. He did that, and then the rest has been relatively plain sailing. Underlining, as Neil said, just how comfortable he is on the table right now. One hundred and thirty two from Mark Selby, adding to the big breaks of the afternoon. An afternoon he's now controlling. He's guaranteed to be in front this evening. And it's a crucial one. Sean Murphy yesterday was saying that when he won the last two frames of the afternoon to go Thank from five one down session, to five break. three, that gave him a foothold. I think if Ryan Day could win this one, maybe not a foothold, but certainly a degree of hope. At 6-2, it would be looking rather bleak. 
Yes, it's uh, old friend damage limitation now, isn't it, with uh, Ryan Day knowing that the, the bigger picture is to get frames on the board and a deficit of 6-2 is, well, it's a long way back against anybody, but against someone like Mark Selby, it, he's got to climb a mountain from there, 5-3, you know, within reach anyway. But you said it at the time, and I think even more so now, that you know, Ryan has been really lacklustre, but for one absolutely sensational break. I guess that's where the game is so fickle at times. You just don't know what's going to happen, how it's going to happen. Things changed very quickly. It was on cloud nine when he made the 147. It's not amounted to anything since, really. never unlucky when you do that you know he caught the red too thin and uh, if anything he's been fortunate for the cue ball to end up on the side rail means Ryan will not be liking the look of that red out and open play uh, what's he doing here yeah, just, uh, maybe the tip's a bit flaky people don't realise you don't play this game think why well, these keep hearing about players tips Rob Milkin said yesterday was saying his tip was no good you, would, you wouldn't think it matters but trust me anyone who's played this game to any level will tell you it's it's really important that you're comfortable and the tip on your cue and all of those things The most famous 147 in many respects was Ronnie O'Sullivan's when he made it in just over five minutes, the quickest ever. I think that's a record that will hold. The player he did that against was Mick Price from Nuneaton. He once played a match down in Reading at the Hexagon Theatre. Walked from the hotel, very short walk to the venue. It was raining. Somehow the water got into his cue case, got into his tip. He literally couldn't pot a ball. Beaten 5 0 in no time. They're very, as you say, fickle things. There's an example of a good safety shot from Mark Selby. Where he blocks off one side of the table. The other side is congested. The yellow is also in the way of that side. And Ryan Day is in a spot of bother. Sometimes these things can go unnoticed. But it was a very well played shot. And maybe the, the plant possibility is all he's got here. He will trying to head back to Bolt. Not a great shot, but like I say, it was Selby's good safety which made that possible. But what has been left? 
nothing. Easy. <coughs> it's Freddy's closest to up into the top left pocket, perhaps, with a view to not leaving anything. Playing on the pink to the opposite middle. Now look at that line, we're right behind it. No. We were the first to know. Not particularly <coughs> close, but as I say, cagely played. With no red for Ryan Day to go for. Shot to nothing. He played there, Selby. Stephen Hendry was making this point earlier on. I think it's definitely to Ryan Day's best interests to play an aggressive game. Doesn't want to get swamped in tactics against the maestro. But having said that, if you're going to play that kind of game, attacking, you have to knock them in. Actual playing time since he knocked in a ball. 30 minutes for Ryan Day, and it might be a while longer yet. One. Seven. Eight. Fourteen. When you're getting chance after chance like this, remember previous two frames breaks of 75 and 132 from Selby. All of the guys here have got the ability 15. to rack up the big numbers. It's all about concentration, though, and he showed that he's got unlimited concentration in winning that WST Classic. The structure of that tournament was unique. He had to play quarter-final, semi-final and final on the same day. One best of seven, one best of nine, one best of 11. Can't think of anyone better equipped. Although that one... Mm. Yeah, he took a little risk. I'm not sure how he keeps this break going. 21. He's pushed the cue ball through the bunch, but well, there's always an element of luck in that, and he didn't receive any. I'm just playing a, a safety shot, which Mark is not really difficult to get out of. It's just a bit of a containing shot. It might be a 
some part of the ball. He doesn't want to give him anything. But that's really nicely done. So that's an odd one. I suppose so good shot. It was unadventurous. And it gave that option of playing him behind the green, but it's a good shot to execute well. That's given him some renewed hope. In the history of professional snooker, I don't think anyone has been better at escaping from snookers and leaving nothing on. But surely this will test Selby in that regard. See what I mean? Yeah, great shot. Playing into a short first cushion, wasn't he? That's the, the hard bit, playing right into the cushion. How do you get those judged as well as he did here? You can say that that was probably as good as it gets as far as an escape. Didn't leave a free ball, uh, a touching ball either, I should say, which would have been in Ryan's interest. Knocking those in with the game he's got. We can all go home. The engraver can start working now because we know he can score. We know he's tactical. Naus. He's top of the tree. Oh, but then he misses the pink. Okay, it wasn't a gimme, but it's still a surprise, Neil. Yeah, they had to force it. He's missed two into that pocket. With an extra bit of pace on them. The trouble is for Ryan Day, the pink and black are both absolutely locked out. How on earth is he going to make anything of this? 35 minutes, coming up 36. Is he potted one? I think he's going to pot one here, but I'm not sure how many he's going to pot after it. One. Seven. This is a complex chance, regardless. But when you've had very little quality table time for three or four frames, it becomes even more so. If he hasn't played a good shot Twelve. there, it got a little clap. I assumed that uh, at first that the Reddy's closest two went. Quite what he did play on, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe the keyboard just drifted further down the line than he expected. But once again, 
There was a little bit of promise from the early shots, but it didn't amount to anything. I'm getting behind the green. Even that shot, that's poor. Now, that is a bad error. That's the Brandon worst kind of mistake to make at this level. The kind that I wouldn't expect Mark Selby ever to make. On the back of a disappointing visit, as much as it annoys you, you've got to put a good safety shot in. That was sloppy. The first ball that Selby has missed with a rest today. He potted his previous five. Well, things have taken a turn for the worse, haven't they? In this frame, we've had a afternoon of good, very good snooker with the, the maximum and the, another big century from Selby. But mistakes have been in there somewhere. Just wonder if he can get through to a red here. Yeah, the two close together, the, the bottom red of the two, I think he can cut it in. Initially, it looked like nothing was available. One. Mm, not like in Ryan's next shot, he could be in all kinds of trouble. And behind the green ball, brown off the green, or something, something nasty. Mark Selby one. Fiendish. Yeah, I mean, if he could have been right up behind the brown, it would have been even worse. Tell you, Phil, someone was asking me when I walked over this afternoon on the way, some gentleman who was about to watch the match, what he thought of Ryan Day's chances. Well, the problem is he's a very inconsistent player. You know, his best is very good, his worst not so great. Oh, uh, probably nice. go Mark back. Said before. Depending on exactly what's there. It's quite a good effort, that. The point I was making is that I think we've seen that even this afternoon, haven't we, Phil, what he's like? For years, he's been a really superb player. But we don't quite know what to expect, and this afternoon's had it all for him. It's some bad and some brilliant. Absolutely. At his best, Ryan Day can be devastating. Mark? Mark Selby knows that. Day once whitewashed him 4-0 in the quarter-final of the Bulgarian Masters. Made a couple of centuries and two other big breaks. That's the kind of performance he can put in. Well, that mini crisis averted. Day also beat Selby 6-3 in the first round of the Players' Championship in 2018. Made two centuries that day as well. Selby's well aware of his capabilities. But he's played some horrible matches as well, Day. One that comes to mind, the semi-final of the British Open, which he went on to win against Robbie Williams.
By the way, if you can hear some balls being potted in the background, that's not table two, of course. There isn't one. It's the practice tables here. Kyron Wilson and Ding in the first semi-final tomorrow. Sean Murphy back in action on Saturday in the second semi-final against the winner today. As he left the red, does the red that uh, is close to the right pocket to go beyond the black? I'm not sure from that angle. The other one perhaps does if you can see enough of it. I think that first red would go, but only into half a pocket. Something good to happen here with the, the cannon, and it has. So, not a classic frame, but one that Mark Selby will happily grind out and get the frame chalked up if he can. Oh dear, that's a really poor shot. Really poor shot by his standards. He, He's actually put himself in all sorts of trouble here. Stunned it rather than sort oh. of played it with topspin. The green provides really uncomfortable queuing. Hence the expression. Excel before. To end an afternoon full of fluency and big breaks, it's bits and pieces. But a frame like this, to follow the old adage, Neil, counts just as much. Yes, he's got a red on here. I think Mark was aware this red went through the gap. Oh, that's excellent. Well... Mark really had this all in his hands. He played a poor shot. Ryan looked ready to sort of take the gap between sessions. Now all of a sudden, there's a glimmer. And I'll say it again, if he could get out of this session 5-3 down, I honestly think you'd see that as a, as a real boost. Because for the most part, he has been outplayed. The 147 stands alone, it always will. Seven. But it's taken that out of the equation, it's been mostly all Selby. Having said all that, I can't think that he'll clear up from here. The ball's is four balls nailed to. The black cushion here, how oh, he gets them in play, I've no idea. But he can do something. Well, that's, that's a nice shot. Now, can he get 13. the red and the pink moved? Shifting a few balls into open play. Uh, I can't think that the... He'd be able to resist trying. Well, no. Thought he might have gone to the red and the pink there, played it with a bit of pace and 
trying to make something happen. But he has finished on this middle red somehow. Ryan, they're 18. Just might have held off to the... I thought that was him when he hit it. it might have just turned left a fraction. But playing it that slowly, anything could happen like that. Yeah, I agree. Not the first time we've seen that, actually, to that pocket this week. It just tapers out slightly. Eight. Unintentionally covering the black spot with the cue ball. Nine. Pretty good shot to finish back over there, all round the angles. But, of course, 16. whatever does happen here, the red and the pink, the red by the pink, is going to be in play. Selby needs it, he can't do anything about that. And it's hard to cannon. See, Ryan refused the opportunity earlier on. Already missed a red with the rest in this frame. That, though, could not have been any more accurate, both in terms of the pot and, indeed, position. 17. Problem with the moving the red, the double kiss is so on because... The red's so close to the cushion, it's hard to avoid the double kiss. And if he does so, he's less likely to get on the red. <laughs> well, has he snookered himself? Does the black respawn? Be lucky if it doesn't. Tell you, it does go on there. He's got himself into a pickle here. Twenty four. So tell you, so he's having a lot of difficulty winning this frame, and he's been really looking like he's going to win it all the way through, but he hasn't done so yet. And now the awkwardness of the table in this 31-minute frame is beginning to dissipate. If they got a chance to clear, might well do so.
Very clever shot. That is very good. Brave shot because you're not quite sure it's going to work out like that, but he executed it really well. Moving the, the red and the pink all around the table. And just keeping himself in the frame here. One of the unknowns there, where the pink would finish. It's finished in open play, very much to Day's advantage. He's also slightly promoted the brown, so Selby on high alert. He's had a bit of luck this frame, you know. I mean, he's, as I say, got himself into a few predicaments. He's fluked the snooker back now. Ryan will be looking for something to go his way here in trying to hit this. Maybe you'll fancy hitting it and potting it left middle. Not easy, though. Just hitting it is one thing. Foul enemies. Mark shall be seven. Now a different problem has arisen because the lead is 32 points. He has to hit it this time or else he'll need snookers. Make the adjustment. You'd like to think this time, when the balls are replaced exactly as they were, that any minor adjustment means he will make contact with the red. Marcel, can you please check it? Now checking the original position of the cue ball. Our marker today, Marcel Eckhart. He will direct traffic. There's Neil in the background. You're on telly, Neil. Fame at last. Anyway, let's see if we can hit this. Oh, well, he's unlucky this time. I mean, that is unlucky. Yep, that kind of... Sums up the strange afternoon that he's had, really. You know, before the match began, Ken Doherty said this match could be like a box of chocolates. We don't know what we're going to get. And he's been absolutely right. We've had all kinds of frames. Well, and all kinds of shots. Oh, well, if he could still win, that would have been quite something, wouldn't it? He needs one snooker, and at least he can get the black and do something about getting the snooker. Brown is in a good place to try and hide the key ball in behind. Yes, and he might fancy playing it here, pushing the yellow ball up and down. Eight. Key ball across towards the brown, trying to get it Somewhere in behind from this shot. It's like a natural. Very good. The shot was on, but you still got to play it. So, it was a funny old situation now he found himself needing a snooker. Now the frame has almost been brought back to life, isn't it? He can't really. You know, Rui is luck here because he got a, he fluked that snooker in the first place, Mark. And also, quite honestly, he should have won the frame about 15 minutes ago. So, 
He's got himself into a sort of minor difficulty, mostly of his own doing. He would not feel anywhere near as vulnerable if a colour or two were safe. That's not the case. They're all in the open. Selby is the great escaper, escapologist. But even this is proving a head-scratcher. Well, I think he's worried about the in-off, isn't he? That's the problem. I mean, he's great at hitting snookers, but he he would be concerned that when hitting this, he will go off in, in, off in that middle pocket that Yellow is close to. Because in, in any which way he plays it, it looks on. As he goes around two cushions, but it's more difficult this way to hit. You could go around the back of this. So lucky. The in off was on. We get a round of applause, but he's ever so fortunate there, isn't he? Goodness me. That nail wasn't the best. If the yellow had gone very close to the blue and the snooker had been achieved, then once more. Selby would have had issues. Playing it like that, he thought perhaps the the yellow, if it didn't go in, would be trapped by the jaws and remain at the top end of the table, therefore leaving Day in a snooker. Not so. Cushion. I don't think the black really is in play here. He'd like to think he would hit the yellow first. Yeah. Black going safe is Jim Selby's favour, of course. And that could be the end of proceedings until this evening. Instead, this now 40 minute frame continues. It's the lengthiest frame of the tournament so far. And I'll tell you what, if oh. Ryan Day can pinch it, it might be one of the most important. It's finished in the worst place to get anywhere that uh, Mark will be in trouble from. Decided to just push the black into play and be done with it and get one behind the blue. Turning into a bit of a slow death, this frame, isn't it, for Ryan? I was going to say a typical Selby frame, but then again, the previous one, when he made a 1-3-2, that's typical also. 
He doesn't mind getting involved, does he? He likes fluency. But he can battle it out as well. Remind me between sessions, Neil, to ask Mark what the lottery numbers are. the way the frame was, Neil. It frame. had to end that way. Seven. Twelve. Ryan Day has made the headlines, but Mark Selby has made his way well towards the semi-finals. He leads 6-2 in a race to 10.